Hey, what's up folks? This is Jesse with Keeping It Real Finance, the channel that always has your back and tells it like it is. Today's video is going to be all about stable coins. I'm gonna keep it light, I'm gonna keep it simple, and I'm basically just going to give you everything that you need to know about stable coins. So I've been thinking about comparing some of these recently and there are some differences between them. Also, depending on uh, what platform you may have that on, the rewards are different. Some people just don't even know what stable coins are, right? And they still invest in things like a savings account, a money market account. And I want to kind of show you today why that may not be the best idea moving into the future, all right? So I should have a lot of good information today on stable coins. Should be short and sweet to the point. If you got any comments, by all means, leave them. And so with that, if you enjoy today's video, make sure to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you click the bell, you'll be made aware whenever I post time-sensitive content. And now, let's get it going. So I wanted to kick off today's video by first saying, what is a stable coin, right? A lot of people don't really know this, uh, but a stable coin is basically just a digital asset that is pegged one-to-one, -one, typically to the US dollar, okay? Now, uh, therefore, stable coins are used to provide stability, all right? Now, some stable coins are backed by government fiat currencies, while others are backed by cryptocurrencies or commodities. So they're not just the US dollar, many countries around the world, uh, there are stable coins for, okay? Now, to qualify as a stable coin, the asset needs to have adequate reserves for each coin issued. So, for example, if the asset issues 10,000 new stable coins, they should have 10,000 US dollars, for example, in reserve, all right? Now, this is where some controversy comes in. Specifically, I'm talking about Tether, uh, the number one coin by market cap with nearly $63 billion, all right? Now, the controversy itself centers around Tether being unable to produce an audit to prove that they have adequate reserves. And let me just say, I've already done a video on Tether. If you wanna learn all about Tether, just go ahead and check that out, but that's not really the intent of today's video, okay? Now, to date, they've supplied self-reported pie charts showing much of their reserves are in commercial paper. Whatever it is, no one's really sure, all right? So their actual cash reserves are said to be less than 3%, uh, which is the problem. And one of the main reasons that US financial regulators at the Fed uh, have been talking about Tether a lot lately and the need for further regulation. So because we simply cannot have a company valued at $63 billion that the entire market is hinging on being incapable of producing an independent audit. That's it. So obviously that's not good for stability, right? Now, because Tether takes much of the spotlight in the space, other coins that have come out after USDT uh, have been able to not only be audited, but have adequate cash reserves. So uh, one great example of this is BUSD, which is the Binance uh, stablecoin that was created in partnership with Paxos, a US-based company. So all of the BUSD reserves are held by Paxos in FDIC insured US banks. So we know it's all there, right? Uh, another example is the Gemini dollar, which is pegged one-to-one -to, -one to the US dollar and was one of the first stable coins to be fully regulated in the US when it secured New York State Charter in 2015, uh, making it subject to New York banking laws and the New York Department of Financial Services. So, in a way, this leaves us in a place that some stable coins are basically more secure than others, all right? And that's something that you need to know, especially if you're going to look into uh, getting into stable coins, all right? Now, where stable coins come into play in crypto is in two really important ways outside of the stability factor, right? So stable coins can earn significant interest far exceeding anything you would get in a traditional savings account. So Voyager, for example, offers 9% on USDC, that is 9% APR. Uh, Celsius offers 8.88%, basically 9%. They are APY, which is even better than APR, 
on a Gemini dollar, true USD, Paxos standard, USDC, BUSD, and more. There's a bunch of them on Celsius. Love Celsius, as I said before. Uh, now this is one area, for example, where Coinbase in particular really falls short unnecessarily uh, by offering really low rewards. I'm not really sure why they do this. At 0.15% uh, APY on USDC or 2% on DAI. So overall, not very great. So something to be mindful of, okay? Especially for anybody new getting into this space and all you do is use Coinbase, well, that's a bit of an issue, right? Uh, now, Gemini offers 7.4% on the Gemini dollar and DAI. So in that respect, Celsius pays you even more, right? Uh, another platform that offers, get this, they claim to offer up to 20% on USDC and USDT is the Yield app, uh, which is based upon a tiered system for how many YLD, those are yield tokens, you may be holding. So uh, I have not done a video yet on the Yield app. I've been looking at this one for a little while. I don't have any holdings in it yet, uh, but by all accounts, it looks like you could make some pretty significant interest with this one. Now, even though it goes by the Yield app, it is not in my app store. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe it's in other app stores around the world, but in the US, I don't have it there. I can access it through uh, the desk, all right? Now, uh, I do have links in the video description for free money bonuses for many of these platforms, in particular for Voyager and Celsius, amongst others. So by all means, check those out. Get some free money. When you do, you also help support the channel. And you can put in your uh, stable coins into those platforms or purchase them on the platforms, all right? Uh, now, the other important way that stables come into play with crypto is in trading strategy. So I mentioned in my video just the other day about the, uh, the golden cross coming with Bitcoin that uh, essentially when you're in a bull market, you really want to uh, pivot your strategy away from dollar cost averaging, uh, recurring buys, etc., into something like uh, stable coins. And what, what I mean by that is as your positions rise in value as the market appreciates, you can steadily peel off profits, kind of like peeling back an onion, all right? So when you do, you convert these profits uh, on up days to stable coins. Uh, when the down days eventually come, you now have reserves to reinvest and increase your positions if you would like, okay? Now, in the meantime, you can just keep on holding those reserves and earn some of those awesome reward rates, right? So, to recap today's video, so stable coins provide stability and some stables are more stable than others. Uh, it, if you're going to hold stable coins, make sure that they are fully backed in reserves, that's critical. Uh, think about converting uh, an existing savings account, a money market account into stable coins. Uh, they're low risk, high reward, and the rates are far better than anything you would ever see in traditional finance and banking. Banking, excuse me. So that's basically a no-brainer. So, uh, it, you know, a lot of us uh, have friends, relatives, uh, all kinds of people that we know that hold a lot of money in savings accounts and money market accounts. And in my view, they are nearly a complete waste. I think the only person you're making money for is those people working at the bank, right? <laughs> uh, now, lastly, uh, use stable coins and trading strategy when we're in a bull market, all right? Now, Something else I would like to add, uh, specifically on Tether, is even with all of the questions surrounding Tether, in order to invest in certain projects in the crypto space, uh, Tether is often unavoidable uh, because it's been around so long, it's ingrained as it is, it's kind of everywhere. It's permissive all through crypto, right? So just know that uh, if or when Tether ever has to face the music, that it potentially could be a black swan event for the market and many cryptos that are paired with it, which is a ton of them, okay? So for example, I, I brought this up before, just about everything on KuCoin is paired with USDT. I wish they would really deviate a little bit more to something like BUSD, USDC, something else. 
Uh, but currently that's just how it is. So with many of these projects, especially some of them I talk about here on this channel, some of my holdings are paired right with Tether. So it's, it's just sort of unavoidable. It's something that you need to know though, all right? Now, uh, I know it would make me feel a lot better if we had more stable pairs, uh, but in the meantime, it is what it is, all right? So that's basically it for today's video. Like I said, I'm keeping it short and sweet. Uh, I, I wanted to just kind of communicate to you what stable coins are there for. They're there for stability, how you can make really good interest on them, uh, how they could take the place of a savings account or money market account. And, uh, and, and really they're part of a trading strategy, right? So they are ingrained here in crypto, they're part of it. And so if you're gonna be in crypto at all, uh, it's something that you definitely need to know about, all right? So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit the like button. Uh, don't forget that I am also on Twitter at KIR Finance, where you can find me tweeting and retweeting on a regular basis. Check me out there. And for a friendly reminder, this is Jesse with Keeping It Real Finance, the channel that always has your back, tells it like it is. And I will see you on the next one.